Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to disassemble an M4 variant. Uh, in this video we're going to be removing the shell so that we can get to the gearbox. I'm going to work on my own gun, this is an old classic army M15 that I've had for around 10 years. Um, saying that the upper and lower receiver are from the original gun, everything else is uh, a myriad of parts. So pretty much all M4s come apart in the same way. There's a front pin here, you remove that, mine's a hex screw. Some of them are flatheads, uh, there are also push pin types. If you've got a push pin, you'll need a flat tool, a tool with a flat end, put it on top of the pin, uh, and then you just push it down. They may need a little bit of force, a couple of taps. If you have to use a hammer, be very careful. Um, the last thing you want to do is end up splitting your gun, especially if it's a plastic body. This is a metal body, so it's a bit more resilient. But this is a, a hex screw. So we just take the top off, and this is just a uh, simple screw head, uh, and then we can push the pin through, and it comes out the other side. Once we've got that out, we can take the top receiver off. One thing you may need to do is to release the, uh, the charging handle. Um, because there's a little, little notch on top of the gearbox inside, that needs to come out just so that it can slide with the gearbox and not with the top receiver. So we've got that out, this is the upper receiver, this is the front assembly, the rails, the outer barrel and inner barrel. Uh, we'll go through that in another video. So we'll just put that over there. Uh, so we can take the charging handle, put that to one side, and we're left with the lower receiver and the stock. Uh, so this is a sliding stock. Lots of different stocks around, uh, much the same in f terms of disassembly. If you've got a fixed stock, I've got one over here, so I'll show you. There's normally a plate on the back with a couple of screws in here and here. So you take the screws out, the back plate comes out, uh, and then what you're left with is a bolt that you can get a screwdriver in and unscrew. And that's the same on this once we take the sliding stock off. So if you've got a sliding stock, uh, you want to Normally you'd push on that bit to slide it back, to set it to the distance that you want. To remove the sliding stock you pull up and forwards, and then slide the whole thing back. Then you're left with the, uh, the stock tube. So this, as with the fixed stock, has got a, a bolt in here that screws into the back of the gearbox. And we want to take that out so we can get the stock tube off. Now you'll probably have some wires in here. I have a little King Kong MOSFET in mine as well that just tucks in there. And in there, there's almost no chance you'll see it, but there's a crosshead screw. Uh, you may have a different type of screw. You'll be able to shine a light in there and see it. And then it's just a case of finding a tool that will fit with a long enough handle, locating the, the screw and removing it. So we just undo this, we can feel it loosening up. It's quite a long screw. Let's go through this whole tube. So once that's out, we need to make sure that we don't uh, catch any wires here. It's quite a compact little thing. And you'll see in here, actually we want to take that out first. Um, Within here there is, if we tip it out, so there's the bolt, and then with these stock tubes, there's a little spacer there. So that bolt goes through there, spaces in there, and then there's a indent in the stock tube that that catches on so that it pulls the stock tube in tight against the lower receiver. So if we take the stock tube out, I just need to be really careful with this MOSFET, it's quite delicate. The last thing you want to do is start pulling by the wires, especially this little tiny wire because I've stalled that myself and it's not particularly resilient because it's onto a circuit board and I didn't want to mess around with the soldering iron out for too long. Okay, so 
burns out the components. Right, so that's off. You'll probably have a plate. This is a sling plate. Make sure you attach the sling on the back. There's normally a plate there to act as a spacer. Put that to the side. So now we're left with the gearbox still in the lower receiver and the grip, the pistol grip. So let's take the pistol grip off. This one has crosshead screws. Some of them again have hex screws. I've seen a couple with flathead screws. So it's got a plate in the bottom of the pistol grip with two screws, one at the front, one at the back. We'll just remove the screws from here. By the way, a quick tip if you are disassembling a rifle for the first time is to take pictures as you go as you're disassembling it. So take pictures of it fully assembled and then as you take parts out and you see new parts that you're going to remove from it, just take a quick picture before you take it all apart so that way when you're putting it all back together you've got a reference for where the pieces go. So sorry, within the pistol grip here we've got the motor sitting inside with two wires going into it, a red one and a black one. This is a good thing to take a picture of. Almost always the red one, the positive, is at the front, but I've noticed on some it's not. So you want to make sure most motors will have the uh, the pin for the positive marked. This one it's got a little bit of red varnish on the pin there, plus a positive symbol at the front there. So these are simple clips that just pull off. Some of them have screws. You'll be able to uh, see what you've got. If you've got screws, just unscrew them, remove the cables, and then tuck them at the back. Just hold them, hold them back. And then remove the motor. This one comes out really easily. Some of them, they do get stuck. Now you don't want to pull them too hard because they're getting stuck on probably the wires within the gearbox. The best way I've found is to just wiggle them. Wiggle them until they come and eventually they will um, slide past those cables. If you pull them too hard you'll end up ripping the cables and it's not really a good thing. I'll show you in another video a good way of preventing that from happening. So you should be able to see in there we've got a couple of screws. And it's just a case of unscrewing them. It's easier later on if you have a magnetic tip screwdriver, especially for putting this bit back together. It means you can hold the screws on the end of the tool and place them in the holes rather than having to get them in the holes first and then hope that they don't fall out when you're pushing the pistol grip back on. So we can put the screws to the side, pistol grip to the side, and we're left with just the lower receiver to take off and before we can get to the gearbox. So this has got three parts attaching it. It's got the rear bolt here, a push pin in the middle, and a mag release at the front. So we take the rear bolt off first. Mine is a hex screw. Again, if it's a push type, same procedure as the front pin come out nice and easy. The push pin, one side of it will be rougher than the other side uh, and that's to hold it within the receiver. If you can't see which end's rougher just by looking at it then pushing it out, push it out a little bit and check the other end if it's rough that's great keep pushing it through. If it's not then push it back the other way. You don't want to push the rough end all the way through or it will mess up the holes of the receiver and it won't catch in it. It'll end up falling out in the middle of a game. Then we've got the front mag catch, the mag catch on the front, and this is just on mine. Again another smaller hex screw. Could well be a crosshead on yours. So we just unscrew that. Underneath that there's a little spring. We can pull that out. Uh, put that to the side, lift up the receiver and the mag catch should fall out. This has got a little nub here and that's what holds the magazine in. You push it out of the way, magazine comes out. Now the gearbox is released completely. We just need to pull it out 
I always move the selector switch somewhere between safe and semi for this. It just lines up where it uh, contacts the gearbox a little bit easier. And then we want to move the gearbox forwards and up. And it shouldn't take too much pressure to come out. And just be careful of the wires as you do this. You may This is a rear wide gearbox, you might have wires coming out the front. They just lie in here, they shouldn't catch on anything. But just be aware of them. And then thread all this through. Again, mine's got the MOSFET on the back, so it's a bit more of a fiddle. And then once that's out, we can put the front receiver, uh, the lower receiver rather, to the side, and we're left with just the gearbox. And in another video, we'll go through all the parts of the gearbox. We'll go through, there's lots of stuff we can do to upgrade it. We can talk about the internals. But for now, that's the end of this. I hope you found it useful. Let me know if you have any comments or questions, and I will catch you next time.